Hey there guys, it's Nick from Beyond the Specs, and today we're taking a quick look at the Red Range of Gen 9 on this episode of Big Camera Showdown. Now, the Red Ranger is something super fascinating. It marks a return to form for Red, and if you remember previous generations of camera bodies, they had that all-in-one body design of the Red one, but have been focusing on modularity with the DSMC-1 series and DSMC-2 series. And so, the Red Ranger's unibody design kind of marks a return to the roots for Red. For as long as I can remember, if you had a good amount of rental money and also wanted a wide range of options for literally any camera component you could ever need, Red cameras were a great solution for your project. And if you had a producer who literally could never make up their mind for anything and wanted to torture them in the budget a little bit, Red cameras were a great option because you could have different modules for different projects or even different cameras for the same projects. And all kidding aside, we love Red cameras. They've been our go-to option at my day job since day one. And we love all of the creativity and flexibility that they have because they can tackle pretty much any problem a modern day production can throw at you. However, with the Red Ranger, Red is doing something really unique. And that unibody all-in-one design kind of heralds back to their original model, the Red One. And the idea behind it is to make a really rental-friendly camera. So if you're shooting in Paris one day and then flying to Tokyo the next, you knew what you're getting with the Red Ranger. There's no worrying about weird configurations, different modules, different IOs. And it's all there and it's all the same between all the Red Rangers. And that makes for a pretty nice, ready to go shooting experience. Now, when this camera first hit the market, it was only available to rent and you could only get it with a Monstro AK sensor. But due to popular demand, Red finally released it to the public but only with that Helium 8K sensor or the Gemini 5K sensor. And the 5K sensor is something we really want to test out because it's been hyped up a lot. It's that low light sensor that they sent into space and we really want to see if it can shoot in the dark. And we want to see how it works with the Red Ranger and to see if this unibody design is worth the hype. So we're going to test that and find out much more. So let's dive in. It's easy to find camera reviews on YouTube, but what if you're a professional cinematographer looking for real reviews by real pros on the gear that you use every day? Welcome to the Big Camera Showdown. Behind the specs look at the best cameras money can buy. Now let's do a quick refresher to what this camera actually is. The Red Ranger is res return to a unibody ready to go design. And everything that you might need to start shooting is in the box when you get it. Now, as you can tell, all the peripherals from your other cameras still work on the Red Ranger, so we're actually going to break this down to show you what it actually looks like coming out of the box. And this is the Red Ranger and everything that you see with it that comes in the box, from the top handle, the Shin PL, the EVF. The battery plate is already in body, so you have to choose between whether you want a V-mount or a gold, but the choice is yours, whatever you prefer. And it has a really nice top handle so that you don't drop that $25,000 camera you just bought. So why did Red make this camera? Now, unlike what you might think, this isn't just a junior version of a regular Red camera where you're trading in usability for a lower cost. This Red Ranger is being marketed and positioned as a ready-to-go, usable camera for traditional filmmaking, where you're compromising customization for ease of use and practicality. And the design choices remind us of different cameras that you see in studios already, like the Aria Alexa or the Barry Cam. Now, what do you get in return for that? For starters, you get a heat management system that is a lot stronger. It has a large single fan that clears out more air and is about four times as quiet as the DSMC2 series, and that means that that sound guy is not going to be poisoning your coffee. It also is really nice for those interview setups where you have a lot of long takes because the camera doesn't run as hot and you don't pick up the fan. Now, unlike its older brothers, this camera is a little bit heavier but still well made in this all metal body. Now if you go with the gold mount, it comes out to be about 7.3 pounds, which means with this top handle, you got a really nice way to get that summer bod. But we think this camera is probably one you want to put on the sticks more than you want to put on a gimbal. And that extra weight is 
pretty well balanced throughout, a little bit back heavy, but you know, more weight makes for more stable handheld shots. And really, it depends on the flavor of filmmaker you are to see if you want a lighter or heavier camera. Now, the Red Ranger comes in only one love language, and that's PL. It has a shimmed PL mount for starters, and they should be coming out with a Canon EF mount soon, but at the time of this review, it's just still that shimmed PL. Now, monitors are optional. As you saw before, I was using the DSMC2 LCD, but you can also use the EBF that comes included with the Red Ranger. And the EBF is really nice. It creates a nice CLTI, it's very color accurate, and there was only one disadvantage we found, changing the settings. To change the settings, you have to go through the dials on the side, whereas with the LCD, you can make those changes on the menu through a touchscreen. And the only problem with this is that you couldn't see or navigate the menu through the EVF. You can only do it through the side. And it makes sense. It's kind of like a traditional studio camera like the Aria Alexas or the Barry cams, where you have a first AC who does all the work for you. Changing those settings on the fly was difficult because if you're in the moment a uh, running gun filmmaker, changing those settings is a little bit frustrating, especially since I can't see where I'm navigating with in the EVF. So it really depends on what type of filmmaker you are and what you prefer in terms of your viewing sources. Now let's talk IOs and if you want the full specs, check them out below. But for us, we found everything that we could ever need in studio or on location on the camera spot. And it's well laid out enough that it makes cable management a breeze. And as you can tell, this camera is well laid out and well designed from front to back. We hope that we see a lot more productions using this as a studio camera. And for those of us who are making those Outbreak movies, it can give you that handheld zombie apocalypse look that everyone so desperately wants in 2023. As we mentioned before, these cameras come in three sensor flavors. You can get that red flagship sensor, the AK Monstro, but that's only available for renting. And at the time of this review, you can't buy it, so we don't have a quote for it. But if you want to rent it, it comes out to be about $4,500 a week, putting it up there with traditional high-end studio cameras like the Aria Alexas. Now, if you want to go with the Helium 8K sensor, that costs about $5,000 more than the Gemini 5K sensor, putting you at a base cost around 30K. Now, obviously, we went with the Gemini 5K S35 sensor, and that's because we already had a Helium 8K sensor, and we're trying to test out this low-light capability. Is it better to have more resolution, or is it better to have better capability in low light? And that's a trade-off that we're trying to put to the test. Because, as my gaffer always tells me, it's not the size of the sensor, it's how you use it. So, resolution versus low light capabilities. We put the Helium 8K and the Gemini 5K to the test in a couple of different environments to see how they compare. Is that dual native ISO a lot better than just a camera that has regular ISO but a higher resolution? For that, we needed to take a closer look, and we have to go to the guy who takes out all my bad jokes and most of the good ones, Kevin. Kevin? Hey guys, it's Kevin, the post-production specialist here at Beyond the Specs, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Red Raw footage from the Red Ranger Gemini. Now I have to be honest, when I first started working with the Red Raw footage, I didn't love it. I didn't think it had a great HDR because it tends to favor the dull blacks. But as I got to know it more, as I got to work with it more, I realized you can bring out that contrast. It just takes a little bit of work. And I think my favorite part about Red Raw is the color. I think you can really bring out the saturation in your images to create some bright and vivid footage. And I'm really excited to be working with this more towards the future. Now, if I own both of these bodies, which one am I taking? Well, if I'm traveling, it all depends on the location and the shoot. If I'm hiking through jungles, uh, if I'm in the desert, if I'm running a marathon, I'm probably taking the lighter DSMC2. But if I know that I need a rugged camera that is built out exactly how I want it, has all the IO ports there, and I can just have a singular build without having to lug around 50 different modules, I'm taking the Red Ranger. Now, another place I would pick the Red Ranger is if I'm traveling and I'm renting. That means that I just want one option, and I know I want to know that I'm going to get the same option every single time. Whereas if I'm traveling to Paris one day and I'm traveling to Tokyo the next, you never know if the rental house is going to have that specific module or that specific configuration that you need. And with the Red Ranger, what you get is what you have. 
and that's one reason I would probably choose Red Ranger if I'm traveling. If you're a new filmmaker, the Red Ranger is great because it's built so that you know exactly what you're gonna get. But if you're someone who really loves that customization, then the DSMC 2 bodies are for you because you can mix and match every single module to your specifications and it's built out of love of your design. It really depends on whether you want that customization or if you want something that's all-in-one unibody. And that's the main difference between the DSMC 2 series and the Red Ranger. Now that we've finished talking about the bodies, let's talk about sensors. And do you choose the 8K or do you choose the Gemini 5K? And that's really dependent on the scenario you're gonna be in and the light that you can control. So if you're in studio a lot or on set and you always have producers or clients who are like, hey, 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 I really want that 8K footage. Give me some of that sweet, sweet, sweet 8K footage. The choice is easy, you go with the Helium 8K. But if you're on location a lot and the resolution doesn't really matter because your output resolution is gonna be lower, then being able to control all the light you have, being able to get a nice data dense negative and being able to have a clean image no matter the environment and no matter the lighting, the Gemini 5K just simply outperforms. So who would we recommend the 5K sensor to? Well, we recommend it to any filmmaker who can't control their light and is not able to film in the most optimal lighting conditions. Anyone who's shooting documentary, anyone who's shooting events, anyone who's shooting in just low light scenarios and who are going into situations where they never know what they're gonna get. The ability to capture a data dense negative and to capture a clean image no matter the scenario is simply something that outweighs a resolution. Obviously, if you're always on set or in a studio where you can control the amount of light and you know that you can always add more light in, then the 8K resolution is great. And if you're shooting things that require a lot of compositing, then obviously the extra resolution is what matters. But if you're going out and you know that you're going to down res anyway, the 5K simply is the one I would choose any day. Well, this has been this episode of Big Camera Showdown. We love red cameras and we're obviously going to continue shooting with them. And we hope you guys enjoy it. Like and subscribe below, drop your questions, drop your comments. Click our channel icon to see more of us going beyond the specs. Take care, guys.